somewhere in between. <laughs> so it's, it's nice, it's not this hot. Um, it's nice weather. Yeah, and how can you live in this kind of, you know, yeah, conditions? Yeah. Yes. And it gets hotter, like, next month it will be like around 50 degrees. Yeah. And how so is during the winter time? It's very cold. Like, oh, it's, like, not it's not the past four years. Years. It's not like very cool with it. It okay. used to be very cool. Ah, really? But it never snows here. So we have actually, uh, it's called a continental climate. So we have cold winters and warm summers. And springs and autumns are nice. So it's around 20 degrees and, you know, it's pleasant. But during winter months, it's minus 20. So it's freezing and it's snowy and there is ice all over everywhere and kids love it. And they during, get their pop all the time. Yeah, they can make a snowman and everything. And during the summer uh, months we have around 32, 33, that's something. You can call them summer. <laughs> <laughs> we don't call them summer. That's spring, oh that's spring. That's spring. <laughs> that's spring time <laughs> in Delhi. Well, actually it's interesting for me you know, to adjust to everything. I love this sun. And nice weather, so this is not you go to Western yeah. India where the deserts are not up, it's even hotter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So well it's challenging, you know. Where do you go for um, vacation, for example? Well I'm gonna be Kyle on her day. Somewhere um, at the coast or sea. Six so always no. I don't know Himalayas. Mm -hmm. Himalayas are like a weekend spot for us. Kashmir. Cool. cool. Kashmir hill station. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There are many places in Himalayas. Nice. We have several uh, seas, Mediterranean, Adriatic Sea. But then again, it's not too hot, and uh, seas are not too hot as well. It's around 20 degrees, so it's a little bit chilly when you swim. But I've been uh, to Thailand for two times in January. It's crazy because I, back at my home, it's snowy and it's minus 20. And then I have two weeks of sunny time, you know, and it's amazing. And I've been to Cuba and uh, Dominican Republic in the weekends. Oh, it's, it, have you been there? I love it. No, it's, it's beautiful. It's really amazing. I've been there. It's actually near Serbia. It's like your home. You, know, you can go anywhere. And I can reach any destination within hour and a half by plane or not more than 10 hours by car. So actually I can go to Praha, Budapest, Vienna. Uh, okay, Paris is a little far away from us. I don't know like Paris. Like I went there last year. It's mm -hmm. like... It's almost like Delhi, so I did not find any difference and people are like, oh, there's fashion on the streets everywhere, but I just found one street which had fashion on mm -hmm. it. So I was like very disappointed and what we see in movies mm -hmm. is like you're way, right. way more better than what I saw. Yeah, well, you're right, but Paris is different. It's like, uh, I would say it's world capital, something in cultural and fashion terms, but you don't feel comfortable. It's like staged. It's like someone is making a movie or something, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And you see, from, from the perception of a traveler, you know, we yeah. don't go into the dingy places and the little yeah, cafes right. that are there, and, you know, you can see the culture. Yeah. We don't do that. We do all the touristy things. Yes, you're right. I've been to Paris three or four times, and each time I had many things to see. I didn't manage to, to visit during my last visit because it's huge and there are so many things you can see. Um, so each time I see different things and I definitely need more time for Paris. And that's, that goes for each and every uh, capital city in Europe, for example, in Rome. I've been there three times. Yeah. And I would love to speak to And I'm, there is one region, uh, Tuscany. That's the best. That's the best. You can count on that. It's you have Pisa, Siena, Florence, which is one of the most beautiful it's cities I've ever yeah. been. Yeah. So Italy is amazing. Have you been to Vatican City? Yes, I've been. I've been to many destinations, and that's something I love. Yeah, I love to travel. I travel because of my work, but also that's my passion. So what do you do? I'm in 
social media business. So I'm doing it. Hello. What time of the session? Uh, we are waiting. Actually, it should have been started already, but unfortunately, people are on lunch time, so we have break. And if you don't mind, you can join us. And I hope in a few minutes we will start. Sure. And you will be the speaker? Yes, I will. Great. <laughs> Thank you. So because of my job, I have to follow trends and to go to different venues and conferences to learn because it's so fast. You know, things are changing incredibly fast. So I travel a lot because of my business, because of my work, but also that's my passion, my private passion. So whenever I spare a little money, I invest that in different events because that's a memory no one can take uh, from me. Uh, I just wrote, uh, no, I just read one article about how uh, traveling is an amazing gift for a person because when you buy anything, Whatever, it doesn't matter how many, how much money will you invest. You will be happy at that moment, and during time, that feeling of happiness will pass. Unlike with travels, when you pay, you will be incredibly happy. But during the time, because you have memories, it will grow over time. Actually, your happiness and, and joyfulness will grow, unlike any other thing you would buy, which is, you know. Yeah, well, I uh, travel with my associates, with my husband, uh, the guy on the app. Sorry. <laughs> so, can we start? Right. Yeah, there might not? be some people who will join in. No, don't worry. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. We will continue later. <laughs> so you will be my crowd today. <laughs> and I'm very happy because of that. You will tell me what you think about what I have prepared for today. Uh, 
three disciplines I'm very fond of, uh, mythology, philosophy, and psychology. Um, but let me start with a story about Prometheus. Uh, let me start with a myth. Uh, actually, that's a crime called theft of fire. So Prometheus, as you probably know, was a titan and so a member of a race of all god, old gods before Zeus and the Olympians. Prometheus, whose name was a fourth thinker, was blessed with the gift of prophecy. And he outwits uh, Zeus, king of the gods, on more than one occasion. Hello, ladies. Um, and that was usually as part of his efforts to help mankind. As time passed, myth and literature gave him an awesome place in human history, as a visionary, as a suffering champion of mankind. According to mythology, uh, Prometheus created men and taught him um, great, many of great crafts they needed for survival. He gave them letters and numbers, horses to help them, and wisdom to create medicine and to prosper them. But there was one more thing, the most important piece of knowledge Prometheus can imprint onto humans. However, he wasn't able, nor, uh, nor allowed to do that, uh, because it was a strong weapon sacred to gods and forbidden to humans by Zeus himself. It was fire. In the version of the story chosen by Aeschylus, Prometheus stole fire and gave it to men. As punishment, of course, Zeus had Prometheus chained to rocks. For pretty much the whole play, this big guy is chained to a big ro a rock in a desolate mountain wilderness. And yet, he's not the only one all tied up. In his view, he has much more freedom than, for example, characters like God um, Hermes, who actually blindly carry out the orders given to him by Zeus. Throughout the play, we see compassion from other gods toward Prometheus himself, but not necessarily toward his goal and cause to help mankind. But Prometheus knew, as he was a fourth thinker, that there is no life if mankind is blinded. There is no glory for the gods if humans are kept like animals without knowledge, development, and grace. Power should be shared with all, not kept by gods for gods. We are all one. Gods are not alone, neither are people. To my knowledge, Prometheus was the first social entrepreneur in human history. And he knew that his decision and activities will have consequences. He knew he will suffer. He knew that other gods won't be able to understand him at first. He felt that he is free, although chained. Because gods cannot exist without humans. Humans are like consciousness to them. They exist only if mankind believes in, believes in them, trusts them, and worships them. But after so many years, God became selfish, holding power and wealth for themselves. So in this metaphor, I somehow think that we can, we can compare gods and Prometheus with companies of today and people of today. The gods, great, powerful, selfish, cruel, but somehow unaware of being fully dependent on people. Prometheus, one of them, able to anticipate, to sacrifice, to include people and to share with them for the sake of the gods, but for the sake of the people as well. Yeah. Some of the biggest companies of today, maybe gods of new age, also great, very powerful, some of them selfish and cruel, and somehow unaware of being fully dependent on people, on their people, on their employees, on their customers, on their 
users. But some of them, like Colby Perthay, Thank You Movement, Warby Parker, and so many other amazing companies which are Prometheus. So today, able to anticipate, to sacrifice, to include people and to share with them for the sake of their people, but for the sake of the business we know today. Because gods cannot exist without humans. Companies cannot exist without people. Humans, employees, consumers, users. Or I could say that just like with gods, people are consciousness of companies of today. They exist only if mankind believes in them, worships them, trusts them. But after so many years, just like the gods, way, way back in history, companies became selfish and somehow unaware of being fully dependent on people. And my question today is what can we do to revive Prometheus and to awake companies to take his path in the world of today? world which is ruled by people, not gods, more than ever before, thanks to technology and social media revolution we are witnessing. And B business approach could be one of the solutions for them, not for us, because people will always find a way to prosper. Companies might not. But the truth is that we actually need each other. So how can we make things better since we are not alone? Companies are not alone, people are not alone. In my opinion, we are all one. So B Business Approach is something um, we created out of our experience and work for many years in the field of uh, entrepreneurship business and social media, working with a lot of companies all over the globe. And we started six of the most important elements of good business practice. If business is aligned with human nature, which is to support each other, uh, which is empathy, which is uh, being here for each other, if business is aligned with uh, organizational structures and needs of employees of today, if business is aligned with uh, specific innovation pressure, if I might say it like that, and if business creates products and services who are in a way responsible, um, then creating impact and wealth, not just for themselves, but for us all, then we can speak about meaningful business and good business practice. And we will explore a little more uh, each element of this business approach. What about human nature as a first element? Actually, I'm always um, curious to find out what companies are actually do to satisfy all our needs. Not just our basic needs, but our social needs as well. You can see this, you know, this is Maslow's pyramid. And it's like we all have basic needs, needs for food, needs um, for clothing and those kind of things. But there are so much more. And we as human beings, we evolved. And the question is, what are companies doing at the moment to satisfy all our needs, not just our basic needs? As far as I know, almost each and every company is satisfying just our basic needs. And what about helping us to create more in our lives, more in terms of self-respect, more in terms of self-actualization, more in terms of being more happy and fulfilled, connected with each other. Uh, unfortunately, there are not many cases uh, and not many companies that are satisfying all our needs. And as Maslow said, what a man can be, he must be. And I do dare companies to satisfy all our needs, and I will show you several examples how companies actually could be more meaningful for them, for their people, and for all of us. Now, let's take a look at this picture. 
What we can see is a bunch of happy children in Africa. And although they are smiling, what we know is that the whole continent is struggling uh, to make it work. So one could ask, why or how could anyone want to make shoes in a place full of poverty and corruption? And that is a question many people asked Canadian Tal Betia when he founded All Liberté Footwear. I'm not sure if you are uh, uh, familiar with this company, but it's truly an amazing company and a great example of the business approach. All Liberté Footwear was the first company to make premium shoes in Africa using African materials and explicitly linking shoes sold by Western retailers to job creation on the continent. They give jobs to people almost forgotten from the whole world. They give them dignity, building their self-esteem, self-actualization, and helping us consumers to somehow make an impact, uh, choosing them over yet another shoe company. They employ workers at factories selected because they pay relatively high wages, provide employee benefits like uh, bonuses, and they employ women as about half of their workforce. And no, all liberté is not just satisfying our basic needs. They are on a mission to support us growing in all different ways. On top of all, all liberté is successful business case. If we now move on with business approach and take a look at organization, we can see again something very interesting. The number one issue on leader, leaders' mind all over the globe is how to redesign organizational structures to meet the demands of the workforce of today. And Deloitte concluded that today's digital world of work has shaken the foundation of organizations, shifting from the traditional functional hierarchy to one we call network of teams. It was previous slides, but no, 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 it's okay. And keys to success in this new organizational model is shared values and culture. Actually, you can go back one slide, please. Oh, no, never mind. So it's shared values and culture, transparent goals and projects, feedback and free flow of information, and people who will be rewarded for their skills and contribution, not their position. And what about all liberté in terms of organizational structure? Guided by autonomy, mastery, and purpose model, where all employees are treated fair, presented with the opportunity to develop themselves and to prosper. All of it, they established democratic and transparent decision making throughout the workers' committee. Their Ethiopian team creates the kind of workplace they believe in, one without oppor with opportunities to form a workers' union, dictate breaks, get full benefits, and even more. For every pair of shoes sold, all workers in the factory earn a percent of the cost, which is more than amazing. And this additional income is paid directly to a special worker's account, enabling the, worker, the workers to decide collectively how to spend it, based on the community's greatest needs, such as scholarship, disaster fund, or transportation, or whatever. They can even take fair trade premium as cash bonus for their own purposes. Which is, you know, it's, it's really something we cannot see too often. They say, tell us how you would do this, our fellow employees, rather than this is how you should do it. And it's amazing how one Canadian company in Africa developing a business model which is so unique is successful, doing meaningful things and satisfying all our needs, from basic to social needs, creating profits on top of everything. Another important factor of 
our BBA's innovation. One more. One more. <laughs> and one more. Okay. So, what about innovation? We can, we can continue. There are three kinds of innovation according to innovators' um, solution. Uh, one amazing book I would uh, like to recommend to all of you is there are performance improving innovations, uh, replace of old products with new and better models. There are efficiency innovations that help companies make and sell mature established products or service to the same customers at lower price. And market creating innovators, my favorite. Third category, which transform complicated or costly products so radically that they actually create a new class of consumers or a completely new market. And that's something, again, that Oliver Ted did. So they are both, in my opinion, they are performance improving innovators, being an amazing uh, substitute and an amazing competitor to overcrowded market you know, how shoe making companies look like and it's, you know, it's more the red ocean uh, industry. And they are market creating innovators uh, built to satisfy not just basic but also our social needs both within their companies and for us, their consumers. Moreover, Oliberté employs a vertical integration model in their production to ensure that rigorous quality and environmental standards are maintained and that business on the African continent receive the full benefit from the social enterprise. So they are completing, completing the circle within Africa for uh, all that they might need to produce quality shoes and to sell them abroad within Western countries and bringing all the profits back to Africa. Let's talk about products and service <coughs> as fourth element of this business approach. And I hope you don't mind me having this notes. It's because I really don't want to miss anything since each part of the speech is very important to show you how actually businesses of today doesn't have to, they don't have to be, I don't know, um, they don't have to think about corporate social responsibility. I think that they have to be responsible. And if they are responsible, they do not have to donate or do different quick fix. They just have to be good toward their people, creating meaningful goods. So actually, when we have examples like Oliberté, some other uh, I will mention, uh, that is a proof for, for, for all of us that we actually can do great things for all living a great life. And if we can prove that with business concept or research, then we are on, on, on a great path. Prometheus would be proud of us, I think. Okay, what about product? Goods and products we deserve as uh, people of today are responsible products. This kind of products meet the needs of uh, customers and consumers and society both today and in the future, which is very interesting. Following the triple bottom line, people, planet, profits approach, in 2015 global CSR study, uh, more than 90% of uh, more than 10,000 consumers surveyed said they would switch to business and brands that support responsible causes, producing responsible products. And what about all birthdays products? You see. Next, please. All the birthday shoes are stitched and assembled in Ethiopia with leather swords from local free-range cows, sheep, and goats the default in a country with many herders whose livelihoods depend on, on this economy. The result is a light and fantastic design. The shoes themselves tend to have simple style with a rustic touch like moccasins and boots and much of the detailing is handcrafted and the shoes and bags are made to be durable. And, you know, this is something they can compete with 
in global markets. It's high quality, it's more than responsible, and it's beautiful. So actually, this is a product we all deserve, this kind of products we all deserve. Let's move on. Of course, the impact. We are all in, in business, so we have to think about not just people and planet, which is the case with me and some of the companies I will mention, but we actually have to think about profits and impact and everything. And impact is proof of business concept. Impact is a fact or influence business should have. But not just on Excel sheets, not just on our bank accounts, but on employees' lives, please, on employees' lives, on their customers, on local community, on all different shareholders, industry in general, and environment. And let's see which kind of impact and on all different uh, aspects of uh, society all Liberté has. In terms of employees, they offer equal opportunity for male and female workers. They even share profits with their people, which is more than amazing. What about customers? Well, they are offering stylish, affordable, high quality and ethical products. About local community, thanks to their vertical integration approach, all Liberté is Africa. They are bringing back to this continent as much as they can. So their importance and impact on Africa and local community is more than huge. About shareholders, you know, with year-to-year -year growth, I'm almost sure that their shareholders are satisfied as well. And what about the industry, shoemaker industry in general, in terms of Oliver Te? Well, they proved that actually you can make stylish, affordable, high-quality and ethical products and make profits from Africa, which is amazing. That's a case all companies should follow, or, or at least to hear about that this kind of approach is more than profitable. And at the end, environment. They were first fair trade certified footwear company in the world. They also assigned 1% of their profits uh, for the planet and all their products are of course recyclable. So in terms of environment, they are more than good again. So following this triple bottom line approach, they actually do understand and align their business to people, to planet, and of course thinking about profits and generating profits at the same time. And last element, Please forward, and ah, you can move forward. Wealth. You will hear this a lot if you end up in business world or if you are part of this business world, and I'm sure some of you are. But what is the role of business in society? Should be important question for all of us. The role of business is to create wealth. There is no doubt. That's why we are all in business. But what wealth is? That's a crucial question, if you ask me. The word wealth, I don't know if you knew that, comes from the old English word, words, well and the, which means well-being. So actually wealth is state of well-being, or as Robert, uh, Robert Kennedy put it, the things that make life worth living. So the role of business has always been the same, to build and maintain the condition of well-being. So over time, there have been changing views with society and business on whose well-being matters, and what form does wealth take? And at the end, important question for all of us, how should wealth be shared and distributed? So there is no doubt that we are in a business 
to create wealth, but wealth in terms of well-being that will be equally shared with all of us, with all people, employees, consumers, users, local community, and the world in general. Because, as I said at the beginning of my speech, we are not alone, we are all one. And it's really important for all of us to feel appreciated to companies, the gods of new age, for what we do and for what we are bringing back to them. But as I showed here, if we think about all six elements as part of the approach companies can uh, use or align business with, such as human nature and our need to belong and to support each other, organizational structures that will follow needs of new age uh, employees who are, you know, in a way different than they used to be 30 years ago. Uh, creating innovative products and services, creating impact on all different aspects of society, and sharing wealth, sharing well-being with their people, then we are talking about responsible businesses and good business practice. There are many companies like Coliberté in the world. I would like to mention just a few of them. You heard about Tom's, there is uh, thank you water movement and there are so many amazing people in the world who are showing us that actually you can create amazing business which will be great to people all over the world. So my question is why our companies are not like that? You know, I'm trying to do the, the same within my company, valuing people, creating meaningful products and, and amazing service. It's not easy. No one said it will be easy, but it's beautiful. It's kind of a theme and business experience you would wish to share with the whole world, but you have to start. You have to dare to challenge gods of today. You have to, in a way, sacrifice like Prometheus did. But that's important. If, if you think about that, if we do not create a win-win situation for all of us, and we are all one, then eventually it will not be a good place for us, for our kids in future. So at the end, I just have one message to you, to all of you and, and all our friends online. Um, because I do think that we will win with this approach eventually. And that we will be winners for ourselves, for our friends, for our companies, for our consumers. But we have to take into consideration that in the beginning, they will ignore us, and then they will laugh at us, and of course they will fight us. But in the end, as a good business practice, as a good person, we will win. And that will be win for us all, not just for companies, not just for people, but for us all. Please never forget that we are all one in this world. And as Prometheus sacrificed himself, I do think that businesses of today could do same to make a world, or at least a little piece of it, more decent for us all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dragana. That was such an insightful presentation. A uh, really wonderful worldview and a wonderful way of doing business. Like you said, we are all connected, we are all one, and it's so wonderful to take everyone along as we go towards success. Yes. And right now, I really also want to buy a pair of Oliver shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. That's always the case. And there are so many amazing cases you, we should follow. For example, this thank you water. If you buy one bottle of water, it's the same like every water you can buy and see anywhere. But the thing is that if you buy their water, then you can track your impact directly in Africa in a specific place. So for the price of one water, you will help someone, which is you know aligned with our nature to do things that are meaningful. And you know, they do not earn, I don't know, profits like maybe some other famous water companies. But they are happy because they have uh, salaries, they have a meaningful job, they are doing some great things for people, in this case in 
in Africa, in case of Warby Parker globally, etc. So there are many Prometheuses today, if you ask me. And we, we do need to sorry, we do need to promote this idea just to show that actually we can earn out of business. But also we can do meaningful things, not being non-profit organizations, but organizations, business organizations, showing that that way is actually possible. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. Not at all. I just want to wrap up by saying that there is this famous uh, saying that those who take eat better and those who give sleep better. But I think with the Dragana's approach, everyone involved will eat and sleep better, I think. Mean. It's, it's a real approach to us. Oh, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you. Now, any, uh, Dragana will take questions now, so. How do you like this analogy between mythology and business? I love it. Oh, happy mm -hmm. here. You center me? Center. Like, I want you to explain the photo, like the picture you put on the third slide, it was, I guess, uh, big businesses versus small businesses. So, like, that picture really got me, but I didn't quite understand the meaning of it. Well, the idea of our metaphor, uh, um, metaphor we created out, out of mythology in this case, is that actually the biggest companies are somehow like the gods of new age. And just like gods from stories, now we can read from Aeschylus and other authors, uh, somehow they also became cruel and in a way selfish and of course powerful, like gods were. Uh, and then again, unaware of being fully dependent on people, just like gods two or three or 5,000 years ago have been. So somehow I see how similar they are, companies or gods of today and gods we knew in our uh, history. And again, Prometheus was a guy, you know, Titan, half god, um, and he was brave enough uh, to sacrifice himself and to do something meaningful, but not just for a mankind, but also for the gods. And that's the thing. I see these kind of companies, Prometheus of today, for example, um, like companies who are challenging gods of today, uh, because all of them, they in a way have to sacrifice. They have to be able to anticipate with gift of prophecy in a way, and to share with people and to include people in everything they do. So I do think that companies like Oliver Thier, Warby Parker, Thank You Water, and so many other amazing companies I didn't have a chance to mention, are like Prometheuses of today, taking into consideration people and their needs, all their needs, from basic to social needs, in order to create a more meaningful world for all. And that is something I would strongly recommend to all companies you can see uh, at this right side of the slide. Hope it's okay. Any other questions? Very well, very good presentation. Uh, my question will be, uh, does you have any statistic uh, of the participation of women in this industry whereby we can sacrifice and include people in this crowd? Thank you very much. Unfortunately, in this shoemaker industry, um, there is, it's like a rule, you know, it's below 50%. And um, although in this manufacturing part of the industry, there are of women, because you know, uh, if it's a dirty work, then uh, they will find a way to include women. 
which is not the best way uh, of inclusion, if you if you ask me. But in in terms of fully care, for example, I know that they actually employ more than 70 percent uh, women from Africa in their African companies um, factories. Sorry. So actually, they are more than inclusive, and um, it's meaningful, you know. Uh, and I do think that we need to have uh, same opportunities. Uh, we will use that or might not, but it's fair to uh, be equal in terms of um, opportunities. And Oliverte is doing that. I think the same case goes for all other Prometheuses of today, um, although stats in, in, um, in general are not favorable in, you know, in terms of women. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions? Gadget, I have a question. Ah. Dragana, I wanted to know, um, this is such a wonderful approach and you are a social entrepreneur yourselves. So could you tell us a little bit about your own company and how you apply all of this personally? I will be delighted. Thank you very much. Well, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of my uh, speech, um, I'm, I come from Serbia, a beautiful country in, in Europe. Um, representing a bee premium group and as you can see I love bees. Um, I find them very inspiring, uh, so that's the name of our company. Uh, and also, I'm a founder of uh, Bee Shaper, which is e word of mouth platform that is very inclusive, including people all over the region, uh, regardless of number of people they are interacting with on social media. Because I do believe that we all have to be uh, offered with the same chances and opportunities. Um, within our company, um, actually, we value people the most, um, our employees, of course, um, and that's something I'm very passionate about and I'm afraid of, because I somehow I think that I have to be a good mentor and to inspire my, my uh, associates, uh, who are my partners, to be honest. They are not my employees. We do things together. Uh, and I value them a lot, uh, and I'm trying to be the best possible mentor I, uh, I can, of course. And then the other side, I have uh, customers, um, and that's around 20,000 people registered on e word of mouth platform, and more than 400,000, almost half a million, of bloggers in this region who are part of our group. So actually, uh, one in two uh, blogs in region of uh, Central and, and uh, Eastern Europe are part of our network. So, um, And I really love blogs. Uh, I'm a blogger myself, uh, and I wanted to give them an opportunity to share their opinion freely and to uh, share their views and experiences uh, not afraid to speak their mind anytime they want, uh, as much as they want. So actually, I do think always about human nature and human needs, uh, how to fit the organizational needs of my company and my people, how to innovate as much as I can, which is very challenging, you know. Um, and of course, I need to create uh, value, wealth, but also impact on all other uh, aspects of business. And um, it seems like it's going quite well. Uh, and that is why I uh, promote this approach, because within our business we actually prove that you can do meaningful things, uh, being a business and creating value, not just for your own pocket and bank account, but also for all people uh, surrounding you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for being here and being such a lovely audience and thanks once again.
I will be around. Yes.
Okay, so we'll see. We go to the mine, um, it shouldn't be too long. I don't think it should be. I don't think it's a long time. Yes, I'm going to, like, see if she finds it.
Yeah, well, oh, okay. we have, yeah. it yeah. runs yeah. its range. My thing is really to get um, entrepreneurs up and running to encourage women globally to become entrepreneurs. And so the campaign recently that I've been focusing on is in rural areas and uh, developing countries. So you can help me. <laughs> yes, I, you know, as a matter of fact, while you were talking, I said to myself, Thank <laughs> you. 
mother earth. Yeah, there's two beautiful. And you have mother earth on this side. And that's the beauty. You know, we only so many. I have never met so many people. No, never.
they don't even have their own story or a person. Who's the man? Africa. 
So from West Africa, I went on and I went to the Middle East and um, so on from there. And so meeting many people and then by being on LinkedIn, which is, I don't know if anyone here is on there, but it is a fantastic uh, place to be if you're trying to connect. I'm not knocking Facebook. I'm not a real Facebook person, even though I have an uh, account on Facebook and you can reach me there. But LinkedIn, one of the things that I tell people is that it gives you the ability to read profiles and to size, size people up to see what they're about. I'm not saying everything is correct, but it gives you that opportunity to really get into and ask questions and you can convert them. How I usually do it is I, when I get my connections, I look at the profile and decide whether or not we have like-minded interests if, these, if they're mission-minded and to see where it is that we can help one another. And that's usually the mindset that you need to have as to whether or not you can um, assist someone in something else. And so from there I set up email and ask can we have a phone conversation because it's always good to talk to someone and then to see exactly, uh, hear their voice and match the voice up with uh, the profile. So I do that and then take it from there and see exactly how we can interact with each other. And it's been very successful for me. Most of my speaking engagements have come from LinkedIn and uh, people, you know, they've read the profile and I think what connects also is because the organization is named Women Entrepreneurs Worldwide. So we're inclusive, not exclusive. So therefore, everyone is welcome. We do have some rules, uh, and that is to be respectful, receptive, and to uh, try and build rapport and be appreciative you know, of all cultures, and it's a very diverse group. So from there, it landed me here. Uh, someone referred me, I never found out who, uh, to WEF, and I said, this sounds like uh, organization that I should really be connected with, or let me just see, and I went the same route and see how we are like-minded with things we, we have in common, and you know, I did that research. And I'll tell you, I was just telling the young lady here that Dr. Habeen is unbelievably, she is the type of person that when you see her face, and I, will, I see a lot of profiles. We've got 7,000 members in the group. But when you, and no disrespect to anyone in the group, but there's some people that just radiate positiveness and that there's something about them that makes you connect. And so I sent an email to her and I said, you know, I'd like to talk to you and I'm interested in this not thinking that she would send me one right back, which is what I'm used to from the legal profession. <laughs> Sent it right back, and I said, in the email I had said, I'd like to schedule a, a conference with you. The next day, it was scheduled, and we talked, and I tell you, she's so radiant, I mean, so passionate about what she does, and it is so genuine. And I knew from that point on that I needed to be connected with WEF. And so, therefore, that's how I ended up here, and I knew that I was coming to India. I've never been to India before, and I got to say, I truly enjoy it. I've been here at the time that I've been here. Very busy, and I like the way the organization is organized. So from there, that's what I do. Um, I think that we were just supposed to give that little spiel, and then we'll talk about the rest later. I'll go into it if you want me to finish up. Yes, yeah, please. Okay. Let me just tell you a little bit about where we are right now.
in developed countries. Entrepreneurs in developed countries are growing at a fast pace. But the challenge for developing countries, and especially in the rural areas, needs much concerted effort. And that's our focus at this particular point. The Women Economic Forum is the perfect venue to address the possibilities of what assistance can be offered to women of rural areas of developing countries. As WEF is such a diverse group with an exorbitant amount of talent, life skills, education, etc., the discussion can be had briefly as to what are the challenges in developing countries. And that's what I came to really find out. Because you really cannot work in a country or try to help in areas if you don't have someone on the ground or you're not personally connected to understand the culture. I tell everyone that I talk to in the group who wants to go global, you must connect with people and get an understanding of what is going on in their country. If you come to the U.S., I can help you out. If you needed to uh, know someone or be connected with someone, and you know, depending on what particular area you wanted to be in, I could give you that. But because I, and majority of what I do is global, is international. So I always build my relationships with a person in that particular country. And I'll give you an example. It was probably back in maybe about four years ago. And someone contacted me, and I knew that I wanted to be, have a presence in the UAE and to see what was going on there. But I also knew that there were a number of things that I needed to know. First of all, coming into the Middle East, I needed to have some idea and some information uh, as far as Islam was concerned, uh, as far as the um, culture base there. And what happened was I had an individual who connected with me and became sort of my guide. And from there, we built a relationship, and it has been fantastic that I learned more than I don't rely on the news. The news <laughs> doesn't cut it. You need to talk to someone who is definitely you know, on the ground and in the particular country that you want to work with. And I'll have to tell you that building relationships is not overnight. And that's the second thing that I tell people who want to go global. Do not expect that you are going to, people are going to trust you, uh, that your rapport is going to be right off the bat. That's not going to happen. You have to earn a trust with people. And the more that you are communicating with them, the more that you are genuine and you are yourself, then the possibility is greater that you can build a relationship with that person. So that's how it happened for me in every every country that I've attempted to, to go into. And so, just here a few minutes ago, when I was speaking over here to our next speaker, and we talked, we do have something in common, and there's a possibility of how we can work together. That's how things are built. That's what this entire forum is about, is connecting with people, is not wasting time to just, you know, we're not just sitting here lollygagging, we're actually getting to know what is going on in the world, what other people are doing, and how we can assist, you know, in any way. So that was the first part of Women Entrepreneurs. And so I went on, and we do, we talk about <clears throat> what I offer here is the task of creating uh, a committee, which is something that I wanted to bring up, to create a committee to examine strategy for an effort to take five women from five countries to be designated whereby developing an out-of-the-box endeavor to build up self-esteem, self-esteem, self-sufficiency, education, and monitor them while taking the journey on the road to entrepreneurship. We need many more women in the rural areas for to become entrepreneurs. First of all, what it will do for them 
is they will be they will build a self esteem, they will become more self sufficient, and it will help them as far as their family is concerned in the avenues of affordable health care and just making them feel better about themselves all around. Now, when can I just waltz into an urban area and think that, you know, I know everything? No. Once again, this is where it comes in to where you should build your relationships and your, your contacts with people. And that, I'll have to say to you, for me, it has been, it takes me about six months to do that. Six months to a year. And you're talking about incorporating visiting, uh, phone conversations, uh, just scheduling, and just getting to know people, you know, on a genuine basis. And that's what it takes for that. The, one of the, uh, and I should say the main the main campaign that is going on right now, as far as women entrepreneurs is concerned, women entrepreneurs worldwide is concerned, is that we have a campaign that's going on. It's called She Belongs. And She Belongs is unique in the way that it was presented to me. Uh, I was a little, I wasn't taken back, but it caught me off guard when I was approached by four men, uh, one in particular, asked me would I be interested in being involved in this uh, in their endeavors. And I was like, well, what is this about? And they said, well, we're husbands, fathers, sons, and we're interested in helping women, our sisters, our wives, as far as the menstrual cycle is concerned. Well, of course, you know, I kind of pause for a few minutes to gather myself because if I'm having a conversation, truth be told, that's usually a conversation with my brother, maybe, you know, one of the three of them. Uh, and so that's what I'm, you know, I'm doing. So to make the story long story short, I said yes, I would get involved. But only if I, this is going to benefit women in rural areas, only if it's going to benefit women to become self-sufficient, how is this going to help them? And so, and to, and what, because it's called She Belongs is because as many of you know, many women are not allowed into certain areas or institutions because of that time of the month. So therefore, that is the project that is on our table in the campaign at this particular point. And so I was glad to come and to be able to introduce that and to talk about it. With that, I think that my time is probably up, but if you have any questions for me, I'm certainly here to uh, answer anything that you need to know. Yes. Yeah, yes. Is, the, is your group of entrepreneurs, is it, is it for business proposals and business, business opportunities too, so that I, mean, I can throw in and like this team needs export partners or do you have stuff like this with me? Is it, is it like for business exchange? It's for business, business, I'm sorry, business exchange. It is for that yeah. also. And what is so great about it is that within the group, there are within those, just the group with the 7,000 people, you have the opportunity to put your information there and to look at other people's profiles and say, this is someone that I think that I might want to reach out to, and we might have a connection here. Okay. So you can do that. Or you can come to me and say, do a matchmaking. yes, do a matchmaking and say, sure, you know, I looked at this. This is what I want to do. Uh, this is where I need some help in the area. And I'll give you an example. Uh, I was talking to a young lady this morning, and she, we had a conversation from yesterday and today. And she said to me that she has uh, some areas that she needs help in, and she lives here in India. Yes, there are women there are women that are going into entrepreneurship and they're starting up, but there's a point that they get to where they need some assistance. It might be a business plan. Uh, it might be reaching out and talking about financial assistance or something like that. Well, there are many people in the group that there's a possibility that you can look at that and help. What I do say when I start to match people up is that I look for if they have global experience, that's number one, 
what has their experience been on the international level and take it from that point. So I really do go through a process of when someone, if you were to send me something, I would first of all really know exactly what you want and not waste your time and then move on from that point to put you in touch with someone who would probably help you. Okay, yeah. anyone else? Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Oh, I have questions. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. He says he covers all kind of all kinds of businesses. Like um, we are in the uh, TV industry, so can we get some sort of content exchange? Or I believe, depending on what it is that you need from the TV industry, what is, you know, it depends on exactly what you might be looking for that you need some assistance with or that you might want to be connected to. In fictional and, content, for instance, we we'll want to have some sort of content exchange. Yes, okay. Then what I would do is I would look for someone in that particular field within the group, either the group or the connections, and say to you, this is a person, or this is a, an organization, or a station that I think that would probably help you and give you some assistance with that. I would go that way. And, and where are you from? Nigeria. I'm sorry? Nigeria. Nigeria? Okay. Yes. Um, so that's the way that I would handle that. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Thank you. I appreciated what you said, how everything in life prepares you for the next stage of your life. And um, it, it runs back to a quote that I love, that experience of any price is cheap. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Muntas from Leisure. Thank you. So we have to prepare themselves that this is a lifelong uh, education process and they have to be psychological, be confident and want to go to the center for be, to be trained and then they can get a social benefit from their involvement in the center. So we have uh, vocational training, we have also uh, follow-up and advanced training, uh, program and workshop, facilities and incentive uh, prepared by the government. And we have uh, encouraged the uh, NGO to work uh, with, with an interagency to work with this uh, women center. And then we are now uh, introducing and give training to women there, although they are still in um, sewing, to be uh, equipped with ICT and technological devices to, to make sure they can compete in global world. And then uh, we have, uh, we try to make, like now, uh, 
uh, networking and also and also uh, to be uh, participate in the world conference to get knowledge from all of you to give uh, get the input and inshallah try to um, be more uh, developed in the future. Okay, uh, what we do in, in Kelantan, we make many motivation classes and also uh, education to make sure they know what to do and then we explain to them, we give briefing, procedures and mechanism how you can do this thing and we make them try to innovate something. The target group for, for these uh, classes is for the uh, widow, for the single mothers, for the school leavers which, uh, who didn't uh, uh, follow, uh, further their studies in universities and also for the housewife. So 95% of the one who go for this training is housewife. And only a small number of the uh, widow or divorce or, or single parents join our classes initially. So there are about 24 related agencies which are working with the government to help women. And then uh, we are doing, uh, giving them skills in embroidery, sewing, handicraft, culinary, and to uh, encourage them to, to participate in, in business and training. And what we are doing now, we are introducing a fan page, web blog, online advertising, online banking, online order, tracking and report, digital record for, uh, to be used among them. Because right now, uh, most of the young women in, in Malaysia, they like to use and to deal online business, doing transaction uh, online, rather than to go to the, to the market or go to the uh, center themselves. So we, uh, from 1990, we have starting from a program called Let's Make Money From Home. And from that uh, program, uh, we developed after a few years to become a center then uh, it become centered at the state level. Then now we have improved and upgraded the facilities to become Darul Iswa. And Alhamdulillah, last two weeks, we managed to make a women's special training center for this apple and also for the widow, whereby we know the real, real problem of this divorced uh, women is they, there must be a, a child care center at the center for them to come and get, yeah, get the training. So we make uh, this uh, center women friendly. And then uh, we make a few uh, value added for them to, to have a uh, facility in the center. And this is uh, some uh, of the pictures that how uh, women in, in Kelantan try to uh, make sure they can involve in the economy. Okay, through embroidery cooking and we uh, alhamdulillah last year we managed to make one one whole week program where we all the women uh, bring their product to the women expo and then uh, for your information we have 45 centers in 45 constituency and there are one, one constituency we have two centers This is the centre that uh, training people with women in Kelantan in embroidery and sewing. And we have uh, standard textbooks, textbook for them. And Alhamdulillah, we managed to create uh, in and uh, try to have uh, one design what we call Mama Pride maternity pants. This is uh, already patented uh, product used for uh, Muslim women or women, women to uh, wear during delivery or for uh, pap smear. They are just the opening is on the part that they should show. Alhamdulillah, uh, we have uh, made this prototype to 45 uh, hospital and last for the last few years, Alhamdulillah, all hospitals in Malaysia has accepted this and we have about uh, 30 to 40, uh, 40 countries that have uh, ordered from us, especially for the Muslim women to use in their yeah, delivery. And now we are trying to upgrade all the manual machine to computer, computerized machine, and we slowly buy for every center computerized uh, machine to make sure we can have 
uh, more product and uh, more competitive with others. And then uh, now they can have made online orders and express sewing. So if you go to my state in Plant Alhamdulillah, there are uh, now uh, seamstress that can uh, sew your clothes within two hours. Maybe it's, it's very regular in Thailand or Indonesia and also in Vietnam, but not, not uh, regular or something usual in Malaysia. So we are now, Alhamdulillah, managed to convince the seamstress that you can do it within two hours. So if they buy the clothes in the morning, they can have uh, fully, uh, they, can, they can wear it at, at night or at, in the evening. And Alhamdulillah, uh, I managed to convince about 14 students last year to further their studies in professional diploma and design with Lim Kok Wing University. And it's not easy to convince them. Alhamdulillah, they have met, uh, graduated last year. And uh, this is our part of our graduation ceremony. And this is what I have done. This is the center before. This is the center after. Okay, this is before, after, before, after. Okay. So, Alhamdulillah, this is part of uh, our uh, struggle to make and to attract uh, more women to come to the center and make them uh, have skills and manage to um, be on independent in their own and have a financial independent after they get uh, this knowledge and what uh, the challenges that I have, done, uh, I have faced now is in terms of producing and marketing because uh, after they know to sue uh, now I have to uh, give them uh, confidence that they can actually not only use for themselves but to, to produce more clothes and try maybe one day to export the clothes because in, in Malaysia the, the population uh, 60% is Muslim and we have our um, neighbor like Thailand and Indonesia we are co competing each other in terms of uh, producing more cheap labor and but more profit to the women especially okay. so uh, this is what I say to you women training center for disabled and uh, single mothers and we managed to get all the facilities like leave like uh, leave special leave uh, uh, children child care center uh, seminar room for this disabled to make sure they can come with us and to uh, try to get their skills okay so thank you <laughs> any questions to market their product uh, globally or internationally. So just among them, then uh, all the It's not easy because you have to take everything out.
practice, specialists in, in maternity. So they call their friend, their friend calls, and then they take this the house. Yeah. It's already maternity because I'm a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> So the, maybe the size will, will, will vary from countries to countries, okay. different. Because the, most of the uh, our consultant is the doctors themselves. Okay. I love the colors. Oh, <laughs> great time. So maybe we can have contact with you, inshallah. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate the work that you do. It's incredible. I like what you said about um, about the the ICT and mobile devices that you have um, enabled these ladies to use um, and it's important to the global context as you mentioned because the world has become a global village yeah. and we end up competing with, with, with global players for local markets so that's excellent I wish you all the best. Thank you ladies and gentlemen and that's our first session for now. Could we have a group picture please? Everybody's welcome. Oh, thank you. When is 
we are meeting with the, the seamstress and also the doctors. I went, I asked them to pet them. They said, why you want to pet them? Why would you? Yes, <laughs> yes, have to. Yes, no way. <laughs> you can't let that go. <laughs> Never know who's they watching. They tried to make the innovation for six months. And they said, why you want to pet them? Oh, your work, you want someone to just take it. You know, that's, that's legal people. <laughs> Understanding. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you because I saw. I, I didn't hear you. Yeah, yeah. 
women supporting yeah, yeah, is but probably not to have such a, you know, this, this someone to live in that self that they have that confidence that they can, because I, I can see that they can see that, you know, it's not that, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you Yes. Yeah. 